In the name of Allah, our Creator, the Creator of the universe and of everything that's in it, without parallels, partners or similitudes, without a wife or a son, because he is highly exalted above all that. These are human qualities and our Creator is highly exalted about the qualities of all his creation. In the name of this great being, I greet you all in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, mercy, and blessings be with you all. In this episode of our program, Reason, I have to emphasize the fact that Islam is the final integration of all the forms of previous guidance to man from their creator, being the final revelation and Muhammad, peace be upon him, be, be, being the seal of prophethood and messengerhood, his message had to be preserved so that nobody can claim that he was not aware of the divine message. Allah has taken the responsibility to preserve uh, his last revelation in the Holy Quran and in the traditions of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Because of this, the Holy Quran is different from any other book because it is the divine word in its divine purity and in its divine language. Being with such qualities, the Holy Quran has to be uh, unimitable. Nobody can imitate the Holy Quran and that's why the Quran came to challenge uh, the Arabs at the peak of their eloquence to produce a book like it or 10 chapters similar to it or even a single chapter and this challenge is still standing without no sane person coming forward to say, yes, I could write a chapter similar to any of the Quranic surahs. The Quran is basically a book of guidance in areas that cannot be correctly addressed by man, such as the area of faith, the area of acts of worshiping, the area of the moral code, and the area of the code of transactions with others. These areas cannot be correctly addressed by man because they either remain in the domain of the unseen that cannot be reached by the human intellect or human senses, such as the area of faith, or they are divine instructions to man how to worship the Creator. And of course, man cannot worship without divine guidance, or they are actually controls over human behavior. And history has told us that man has always failed to produce controls over his own behaviors. So uh, there was the need for religion, the need for the divine guidance. And this divine guidance came down to Adam and Eve on the moment of their creation. They taught their descendants. And whenever man lived according to the divine guidance, he lived peacefully and happily, established his role on earth successfully uh, within the framework of the divine justice. But it is in the human nature to tend to deviate, to tend to transgress the limits the Creator has placed for every man and woman. And whenever man deviates, he indulges into many injustices and many uh, atrocities. And the need arises for a new message from the same source to teach man the answers to the basic questions. Who am I? Who has created me and sent me into this life? What's my message in it? How can I fulfill that message to the best of my ability? And what's for me after this life? These are basic questions in the life of every human being. Unless they are correctly and fully answered, man cannot live peacefully and can, cannot fulfill his role successfully in this world. That's why the process of revelation came down on a long chain of prophets and messengers. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us that the number of prophets was in the range of 120,000. And Allah has chosen from that long chain of prophets 317 messengers. We do not have today within our own hands 317 different divine messages. There had to be an end to that long process of revelation. And the end was Muhammad, peace be upon him. 
and the last revelation was contained in the Holy Quran and in his traditions, peace be upon him. Because of this, Allah has taken the responsibility to preserve the Holy Quran in its divine language, in its divine purity, word to word and letter to letter. And this in itself is a miracle. Man does not know a book that has remained within his hands for 14 centuries without suffering uh, a range of distortion, a range of infiltration, a range of adulteration. And we have many evidences in front of our own eyes and the li libraries all over the world are full of examples that can testify to this fact. The Holy Quran is the only form of divine guidance within the hands of man today that has been kept intact in exactly the same language of revelation, of revelation, word to word and letter to letter, without the slightest human infiltration. And this in itself is a miracle. If we discuss the basic message of the Holy Quran, we can see clearly uh, millions of reasons to justify the divine purity of that book and the divine nature of that book. Yet Allah knows in his eternal knowledge that time will come when man can negate religion. Man can live away from believing in the domain of the unseen. And he indulges into scientific discoveries and technological advances and forgets about the world to come either partially or completely, exactly like the people of our time today. Because of this, Allah contained within the Holy Quran more than 1,000 verses that speak about the cosmos, verses that are linguistically perfect and scientifically absolutely correct. This is the address to the people of our time, a book revealed more than 14 centuries ago to an unlettered prophet in an unlettered community contains that immense amount of scientific knowledge that was not discovered by man except through the last few decades. Because of this, we emphasize in this program reason the uh, scientific notions in some of the cosmic verses in the Holy Quran. We have already discussed some and we'll talk today about five verses that came in chapter 55 of the Holy Quran, Surah Al-Rahman, the most gracious, speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, the supreme being with no parallels, partners or similitudes, with no wives or children, with no challenger or any power that can stand in the face of his instructions. Speaking about Allah, our creator. The verses go by saying, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the universe and of everything that's in it, is showing his might, his wisdom, his knowledge by some evidences in our life. And one of that evidences, merging the two seas to meet without mixing completely. Between the two seas, there is a barrier that cannot be transgressed. And then the verse goes, And it reads, Which of your Lord, uh, uh, which then uh, of the favors of your Lord you will deny? And this verse has been repeated in Surah Al-Rahman 31 times. And Prophet Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, tells us that when the jinn listen to this uh, verse, فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ With which favors of your Lord will you then deny? They used to say, وَلَا بِأَيِّ مِّنْ آلَائِكَ يَا رَبِّ نُكَذِّبْ فَلَكَ الْحَمْدُ وَلَكَ الشُّكْرُ None of your favors, our Lord, we can deny. So you deserve all praise and all thanks. So the Quran says, مَرَجَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ يَلْتَقِيَانْ بَيْنَهُمَا بَرْزَخٌ لَا يَبْغِيَانْ فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانْ يَخْرُجُ مِنْهُمَا اللُّؤْلُؤُ وَالْمَرْجَانِ From within these two seas, we get both pearls and corals as precious or semi-precious stones. يَخْرُجُ مِنْهُمَا اللُّؤْلُؤُ وَالْمَرْجَانِ 
فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان then by which of the favors of your lord will you, will you be deniable will you deny and none of the favors of our lord we, we deny inshallah ta'ala these five verses have got an immense amount of scientific knowledge and I will ask the young ladies and the gentlemen here to tell us about their reflections, what they can get from listening to these five verses in Surah Al-Rahman. And again, um, by you, inshallah, يعني, tell us what, uh, Shayma, tell us what uh, you reflect or what you get from reading these five verses. What really caught my attention in these verses is that um, although the two seas are so different, one being fresh and the other being salty, subhanAllah, they both do accommodate the corals and the stones, and um, which are like very precious and very beautiful and very valuable. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the two seas, um, which are, they're not very tangible. I mean, not many people are going to taste the two seas to find out whether or not they're really salty and fresh. But we do have the corals um, in front of us. And so this is pure evidence that this is something that Allah created. There were no seas in Mecca or Medina when the Qur'an was revealed. And they didn't really have the technology to go down and see these corals or the pearls. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just um, really amazing that 1400 years ago this, was, this came to the Prophet ﷺ. And subhanAllah, it just really <laughs> proved a lot. <laughs> okay. what, what caught my attention is the scientific aspect in the ayah. We know from the study of physics that different bodies have what is called viscosity, yes. which is basically uh, densities, different densities, if you will. Yes. And uh, running parallel to that is another term which is called surface tension, yes. uh, being the fact that uh, different uh, bodies of liquid with different viscosities tend to have boundaries defining their volumes. So this means that if two liquids with different viscosities meet each other, this is not really an indication that they will mix. Y you, you may be standing at the point of interface and then you scoop a cup from this uh, body of, of, of volume or liquid and that body of, of liquid and you will find different tastes. Mm -hmm. This means that there is no mixture between the two. So this is basically the scientific dimension in the eye. Um, what catches my attention, of course, is um, the mention of the pearls and the coral reefs and perhaps because you know, us women love pearls, and <laughs> and it's uh, everybody highly appreciates um, the pearls, the coral reefs, and um, I think it's beautiful how God always tries to to address us um, in the most simple way to to bring our attention to to the beauty He's uh, that is around us, that he, the the bounties that He's given us, in a way that we can um, we can really understand and that we love. And um, and how it's pearls are, are uh, beautiful and also they bring they, they they are valued and they bring wealth also there's so many dimensions to to that and uh, the coral reefs like nature lovers everywhere spend hours diving just just to see these um, beautiful um, this beautiful creation and the life um, s that it sustains under under the water as well so it's very beautiful. Mark, Mark uh, I agree with all what has been said, but uh, the verse has got uh, much more meanings than this. Uh, in the previous episodes, we spoke about the meeting of fresh water with saline water. And there are three verses in the Holy Quran that speak about this fact. Two verses speak about the meeting of fresh water, a river flowing into a sea, uh, and what happens with the fresh water as it is debouched into the sea. Um, and um, a third verse that speaks about the generality of uh, different waters meeting. This uh, verse has got a particular notion because it speaks about the presence of pearls and corals. And we know that pearls usually live in saline water, but they have been cultured very lately in fresh water in Japan and in the USA. Yet corals cannot exist except in uh, highly saline water, not only ordinary saline water. It, uh, corals can only live in shallow, warm, very saline water. And that's why they uh, flourish along the Australian uh, coast, uh, in the Red Sea, in uh, areas of uh, high, in the Bahamas region, in areas where the temperature is high 
and the salinity is high. And uh, of course, for, uh, because of this, we find that the verse here in Surah Al-Rahman is speaking about water in the sea, uh, within the same sea, or within different seas, where corals can live and can exist. And this is really something unique, because if we can understand how fresh water can float on the surface of saline water, due to difference in density or in viscosity, as Ashraf said. How could water be in the same sea without mixing? Something nobody could understand until very recently. Um, we have observed that certain seas are partially restricted seas, partially closed seas, like the Red Sea, the Mediterranean Sea. Once you get restriction, you get evaporation and you get excess uh, in salinity, excessive sal salinity. As this water moves out of these closed seas or semi-closed seas, they do not mix with the open ocean. They flow at the bottom because they are more dense. And we have seen flows of this style between the Red Sea and the Arabian Sea. We have seen it between the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. Not only this, but we see from the, the two poles dense water that flows towards the equator. And we can see, due to differences of densities, we have several layers, vertical layers in the seas and oceans. And these layers, have each layer has got its own physica, physical and chemical characteristics. It has got its own forms of life. It has got its own sediments. They meet, but they do not mix. And they are actually separated into vertical uh, layers or vertical strata. Not only this, but when the open seas and oceans were photographed from outer space um, in different uh, wavelengths of, of light, we saw different patches of water next to each other in the same sea having different colors. When these were analyzed, they came down to these patches and analyzed them. They found that each has got its own physical chemical characteristics, its own life forms, its own uh, types of sediments, they meet at their own preference and they don't mix completely. And because of this, we have a multiplicity of environments in the seas and oceans that allowed various types of life to exist, various types of sediments to form, various uh, currents that move between one sea and the other. And this is really essential because it gives uh, warm currents to cold areas cold currents to hot areas, and because of this multiplicity, we had the, this uh, highly variable forms of life, plants and animals that flourish into the sea, even to the greatest depths of oceans, which exceed 11 kilometers. So this verse is really unique. The other two verses which you mentioned before speak about fresh water and marine water. This verse speaks about marine water and marine water. Nobody at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam could ever think of this fact that the same water in the same sea could meet without mixing completely. And that's why the scientific notion in this verse is an ample evidence to convince any uh, objective person, any sane person, that this holy Quran cannot be the work of man. It is the word of the creator and its divine purity and it's in, in its divine language. And I hope that some of you can comment on what I've said. Uh, if you like, uh, Tariq, to say a few words. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, well, uh, what I can say is, subhanAllah, uh, really, God, Allah, uh, uses this uh, beautiful chapter of Ar-Rahman uh, to always remind us and ask us, what are you denying of all these uh, creations and of all these things that uh, God has given to us? Uh, this specific example, when, uh, when he talks about the two seas or the different parts of the sea uh, sitting right together and not mixing, it's really amazing. Uh, God wants us to look around us and use science to understand more and look more and in deeper into things and relate this to religion and relate this to our book, the Quran. And then we would understand that this is the truth. This is the Holy Quran. It knew all, we had this all uh, uh, since 1400 years and we still have it now. So subhanallah, yani, subhanallah. Barakallah fi. Um, I think the verse, uh, فَبِأَيَّ أَلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَ تُكَذِّبًا 
uh, as it has been repeated for 31 times, um, that Allah is asking um, humans and uh, jinn, uh, what part of this can you deny? Because uh, anybody who would uh, read this and think objectively would either believe or would deny something that they know that is right and true. And it also points out the singularity that uh, there's only one Allah for anything that exists. As it says, Rabbukuma, take out your band. Thank you. Uh, we can see from uh, this uh, or this uh, few number of verses, uh, a huge amount of uh, scientific notion that was not known at the, the time of revelation of the Holy Quran. Uh, they were not understood uh, until uh, uh, aerial photography was uh, used and space uh, photography was used. And uh, this was discovered in the last few decades of the 20th century for a book revealed more than 14 centuries ago to spell this fact, water can meet in the same basin without fully uh, bl being fully blended with each other. They can meet and interact, but each body of water will have its own fringes, both horizontally and vertically, so that many media can be provided for the various types of uh, life into the sea. And uh, the sea is uh, really a wonderful source for provisions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through his wisdom, has created this particular fact that the water mass in the same basin can be stratified into layers with physical chemical characteristics. Each layer has got its own physical chemical characteristics and uh, also horizontally, patches beside patches, each patch has got its own physical chemical characteristics, its own type of sediments, its own forms of life that live in it and flourish in it so that this uh, multiplicity of environments can suit every type and form of life, plant and animal and because of this, we get this huge diversification of the life forms, particularly in the oceans and in the seas. Uh, this is one of the great mercies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon um, his creation, uh, men, animals, and plants, and a sign of his might, his wisdom, uh, his uh, knowledge uh, that uh, cannot be uh, really uh, matched with any human effort uh, uh, whatsoever. And because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is repeatedly asking us in the Holy Quran and in the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to look into ourselves and into the universe around ourselves and see with our own eyes and feel with our own senses the uh, greatness of the Creator, the wisdom of the Creator, the immense knowledge and might of the Creator so that we can bow in obedience to his instructions and work according to his own guidance. And for another meeting, inshallah, I leave you with our Islamic greeting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, uh, mercy, and uh, blessings be with you all.